This is our third week of our uh, ah, class on the burning room. Uh, the first week, uh, we talked about that. We went through a process of trying to figure out what God is doing among us and what the point of the burning room is. And we went through that. And uh, if you didn't see that, you can see that online. Uh, the, second, the first week, we talked about uh, um, what we pray. <clears throat> Last week, we talked about how we pray, and we give a little history of what some people call the prayer movement, which uh, started in a small room in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago <clears throat> with a really anointed prayer meeting. How many of you would like to go to a prayer meeting that Peter led? That would have been a good prayer meeting, right? That would be a good meeting right there. Ha. Ah. Yeah. Amen. We got, fortunately, you got the Holy Ghost. We got the same Holy Ghost that Peter had. Amen. <clears throat> so we talked about uh, last week how to pray. And the short cut to that is basically pray in the Spirit. Amen. We want to pray in the Spirit. Amen. Pray in the Spirit. Today we're going to talk about what to expect from our prayer here in the burning room. We're not here just to pray. We're not here. <clears throat> let, let, let me, let me. I'm a little overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit right now. So <clears throat> when I say just to pray, I mean, we're not just doing a religious deed. You know, God, I have, I've walked this road or I did this pilgrimage or <clears throat> I said the magic words. We don't just do things to do things. We do things because we want to interact with God. The gospel of Jesus Christ is an invitation to fellowship with God. It's an invitation to fellowship with God. And as we've responded to the gospel, we want to fellowship with him. and We want to co-labor with him on the earth. And when we pray, we should be expecting stuff to happen. Like there, We should be expecting there to be a product of our prayer more than just us feeling good that we have prayed. And, 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 and the biblical model is that God does something and then he explains to us what he did. This is why he wants us to walk in faith. So we can do stuff. Like we can just totally yield to him and let him, mm, let him wow, let him do stuff. And then later on, he explains, later on, we, we, we understand why he did it, why he wanted us to do it. As we walk back, we look back at our journey, we see that God was with us the whole time, even though all throughout that journey, we were like, God, are you with me? <clears throat> I know intellectually, I know God is always with me, but sometimes I'm like, God, are you with me? But I can't look back and find a time he wasn't with me. Right? And so we can't, wait for, <clears throat> we, can't, we can't wait for understanding in the moment. We have to walk in faith. We have to believe that he's with us on a journey that we're going somewhere and he's producing something. And so when God comes in power like this, when he comes in presence ah, and he's touching people, ha, ah, <clears throat> you don't want to shortcut this process. You don't want to short circuit this process. You don't want to rush through this process. You don't want to get off the ground too quickly. Unless this is a common occurrence for you that... You know, people in middle school get baptized in the Holy Ghost. They pray for people and people get touched. If that's a common thing for you, I guess then you can just. But this might be uncommon. And if God shows up, we might want to sit around and try to figure out what it is he's doing. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and if you don't know what he's doing, just let him do it. You're doing something, God. I don't know what it is. Well, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but I'm glad you did it. I'm glad you're doing it. And so I just believe by, mm, by his spirit. Wow, he's doing something in some people right now. It's impossible for you to come out of the presence of God the same. Now, you can choose to be changed back to who you were, but you didn't come out of the presence that way. You have to carry it out of the presence with you, though. Amen? Yeah. We have to carry it out of the presence. And so we have to... Wow. Mm. Mm. Ah. <clears throat> ah. If you can't yield the Holy Spirit in this meeting, then our church just needs to close down. <laughs> so if you feel self-conscious at all about yielding the Holy Spirit in this meeting, like that's saying that we as a leadership team failed. <clears throat> right? So I want you to feel at full liberty to yield the Holy Spirit. And whatever he does, he does. Amen? Amen? Like we had a plan. We had a little meeting. And so I should have been up here a half hour ago. But, but God. Amen? But God. And so we're not here to make me sound good. We're not here to have a good little teaching. We're here to allow God to do something. And in the, in the months and years to come, when people watch this video, I want them to know that God moved in this meeting. We have people laid out all over the ground here because God is moving. Yeah. And you can expect God to move in your life. 
You can expect God to move in your life. Amen. Wow. Mm. You, but you, I want you to choose to yield to his move. Amen. I want you to choose to yield to his move. That was cute. I want you to choose to yield to his move. <clears throat> this Sunday, I'm talking about money. And so many people are scared to talk about money. They're scared to hear the preacher talk about money. The only reason you'll be scared to hear a preacher talk about money is because you're afraid he's going to tell you to give something you don't want to give. That's the only reason. That's between you and God. Ha! But if you gave it all already, like if you gave your reputation to him already, like, so I'm going to be laying on the ground twitching around a little bit. I gave up on that a long time ago. Ha! Ha! <clears throat> Some people just need to tell God, I will be your sign and your wonder. I will be your sign and your wow, wonder. You have to learn to drink deep. <clears throat> drink deep. Drink deep. Drink deep. Drink deep right now. Just do it. Just drink deep. Come on. You just got to drink deep right now. Drink deep. If you have to close your eyes and just see him touching your innermost being, maybe you need to take a deep breath and feel him, his goodness coming in and all the bad coming out. Whatever you got to do. Whatever you got to do. Whatever you got to do. If you got to watch the river rise up over your head, do that. If you see yourself just taking a big drink of the Spirit of God and it just permeating your body, do what you got to do. Ha, ha, ha. But allow him to, to, to touch you deeply tonight. Allow him to touch you deeply tonight. Ha, ha, amen. Amen. Ah, shakaba, shedaba. Mm. Mm. Ha! Ha! He's still being poured out up front here. I don't know what's happening in the back. Ah. If you've been dealing with something, you might as well let him deal with it right now. Like, why would you go home tonight and then start complaining about something when you're right here in the presence? You might as well just now, just, just like... Just let them soak it right now. And whatever your issue is, you just need more God on it. Ah, and it should produce joy in your life. It should produce joy. That troublesome thing, should, it should, there should be joy being produced there right now. Should be joy. Should be joy. Let them touch you with some ah, joy. Shakaba. Ha. Ah. Mm. That's what hope looks like. Hope is joyful. Mm. Is it going to work out? I don't know, but you'll watch God in the midst of it. And that's all you really need. Is it going to work out the way you thought? Maybe not. Maybe. Who knows? But God's in it. That means it's going to work out better. Maybe not the way you define better. But your heart will line up with God and you will get his best. And you'll be happy about that. Shekaba, laba remantan terebe, shedaba ka terebe, mmm kataraba, mmm shedaba, lara, mmm shedaba ka, ha, mmm shedaba, mmm ha. I'd like this to be lingering when we get together on Sunday morning, wouldn't you? Shaba, mmm sheba, ha. Okay, I got a lot of scripture, so I hope you're not in a rush. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, Sheba, ha, shakaba, mm, reba, laraba, ramon kante, mm. <laughs> Sheba, kabaka, sa, ha, 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 mm. ah, mm. there we go. Now we're getting some breakthrough. Ha, sometimes it takes a little while. Mm. 
shake. Ah, leda ba rama. Here we go. I feel like we're finally yielding some things to God. Here we go. Mm. Ha. Ha. Oh. Ah. Mm. Mm. Whoa. Kaba. Lande Ah. Ha. Mm. Ha. I feel like we're contending for some people's breakthrough right now. Yeah. Saraba. Shekaba. Mm. Leda ba ka terebe. Ha. 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 Oh, I just feel like some people just need to look at that thing you can't stop thinking about and say, God, I really trust you in this. I just trust you in this, God. I just really trust you in this. I really trust that you're bigger than this thing. You're even bigger than my ability to manage it. Jesus, I trust you. Even if they mess it all up, I trust that you'll, you'll make it even better. And the other side. Shekabah, ladabaka. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so... <clears throat> Ha. The way God has created me. See, I'm not a perfectionist. Ha. A perfectionist thinks we need to do the right thing the right way, regardless of what happens from it. They're just happy they did things the right way. I need to see some results. And I'm more likely to not care how we do it as long as we get the results I'm looking for. Amen? That's what I'm, mm, I'm looking for results. This is, this is how God crea mm, created me. I'm glad he's, wow, added to perfectionist to my life. Ha, huh. so like forms can get filled out properly, right? And uh, things can be done correctly and I don't get IRS audits and that kind of thing. I'm very, very happy about that. Bills get paid on time. The perfectionists are very good at getting the bills paid on time. I'm not so good at that. Hallelujah. I got the electricity. I feel like that's good enough. They want paid every month. I'm not as good at that, right? So I get the perfectionist in my life. Wow. But I want some results. I don't want to just pray to say that I prayed. Ah, I don't want to just feel good that I prayed the right prayer. I want results. I want to, I want to see God in the room. Amen. And ah, and so we're going to talk today about what we can expect. Ah, God. To, mm, mm. Let me say it this way. Mm. As we, mm, as we search this, mm, the scriptures, we found the scriptures of what God told us to expect in this meeting. And if God told us to expect these things, then we have to have some expectation. Amen? Yeah, amen. If he told us this is what you should expect, that doesn't mean like this may or may not show up, but, you know, I just thought I'd include you in early on. No, no. We need to come with expectation that things are going to happen. Amen. And if they're not happening, we need to say, okay, what are we not doing right because God said this would happen? Does that make sense? Yeah, we need to come with expectation. That's to, mm, mm. How's it going on back there, Mike? Mm, is it good over there? Ha! Ha! Ah! Shakaba! 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 Ha! Ha! How you doing, Josh? Mm. Are you man of my scriptures back there? Ha! All right, I haven't actually said anything yet. <clears throat> ha. Whoa. Ha. 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 So the first two goals. Mm. Ha. God gave us some. Ha. First two scriptures. God gave us some goals ah, for this meeting. Mm. The first. Ah. Wow. This is really good. Ha. Ha. <clears throat> I cannot imagine watching this video, Corey. Ha, mm, mm, ha, ha, ha. I remember I used to watch, uh, ha, never mind, I'm not going to try to tell a story. Ha, mm, ha, this is going to delay things. Thank, mm, ha. So I got two scriptures here. First one's in Luke mm, 9, 28 and 29. Ha, 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 ah, mm, ah, mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Ah. Shakaba. Rabaka. Terebe. Ha. Terebe. Ha. Ha. Hmm. Hmm. Come on up here, Corey. Mm. Why, don't you, why don't you sit on the stage and 
Ah. Ah, when it gets to the scripture, you'll just read them. <laughs> yeah. ah. Ah. Some eight days after these sayings, he took along Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. 29, and while he was praying, the appearance of his face became different, and his clothing became white and gleaming. Um, so we see, mm, Jesus was transformed in times of prayer. He was transformed, and we can expect to be transformed. We, mm, we can expect. Holy Spirit told us. Ha, we can expect. Mm, we can expect to be transformed. Mm, the second one is in John 7, 37 and 39. Now on the last day, the, gr the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Ha, he who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For the Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Ha! 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 So, mm, ha. if we come to him thirsty, he said we should be overflowing with living water. Amen? Uh, that is a transformation right there. To go from thirsty to overflowing with river, living water. That's what we saw when we got here. Mm. A girl came without. She got filled and had a refreshing water that came out of her onto everybody else. Ha! Rivers of living water came upon her. Living, living water. So there's a transformation. There's a supernatural transformation. That, that could occur into a person due to the workings of Holy Spirit. Mm. Luke said Jesus was white and gleaming. Ha. Mm. Ha. John said that from our innermost being will flow rivers. Ha. And, some, mm. and so right now, God's kind of unstopping the flow in your life right now. Ha. That's why you want to yield to him in these times. You want to yield real good right now so when you're out there, you're not stopped up still. If you're worrying about how you look, you're worrying about what, 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 what my, like we talked last week about prophetic uh, gestures and per, the prophetic ah, signs and reacting to what God is doing. You have to yield to what the Spirit's doing. Mm, and you got you to be around some people. Well, actually, you does not care if they're going to judge you or mm, judge you or not. You just, I am going to yield the Holy Spirit right here because I need to get it. I need to become a river of living water. Amen. Mm, rivers. And so this isn't a prophetic act. This is actually happening. Huh. We're not doing something, though something else can happen. This is actually happening right now. Holy Spirit is moving on people right now. And we need to let him move on us. Hmm. 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 So right now. Ah. Mm, right now, I want you to have expectations that you're being mm, transformed. And that he is forming a river of living water in your life right now. Ha! All these issues aren't coming at you. You're coming at them with rivers mm, out of your belly. Rivers are coming at your problems. Rivers are coming out of dry land right now. Stop worrying about what's coming at you. What, what are you coming at with your river? With your river, amen? From your river. Some of you seem to put your hand on your belly and say, rivers out of my belly. Mm, rivers out of my belly. Come on. Go on, just, just pray for a second. Mm, rivers. So I declare rivers out of your belly in the name of Jesus. Mm, rivers out of your belly in the name of Jesus. Ha, 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 ha. Ha. Mm, mm, mm. ah, our third one was out of Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 18. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is the that is di dissi <laughs> dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, yeah. speaking to one another in psalms Yay. and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father, and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Ah. So mm, there is an intoxicating effect that happens in the Spirit. Oh, 
These are not drunk as you suppose because it's still early. Mm -hmm. Ah, ah, it's still early. They're not drunk yet. Ha! Ah. Mm. This is the work of the Spirit. This is the intoxicating work of the Spirit where you will drop your inhibition and say, God, do whatever you want in my life. Do whatever you want in my life. I, I'm yielding to you right now. Ha! Ha! The problem with alcohol is it drops your inhibitions. You do stupid stuff. But God will get you drunk so you'll do some God stuff. And stop being stupid and not obeying Him. So we can expect an intoxicating presence of the Lord in this room. We can expect an intoxicating presence of the Lord. Sometimes he's got to inoculate you a little bit. He's got to, he's got to, he's got to numb you a little bit before he gives you, the, gives you the pain, right? So you don't feel it. So sometimes he numbs you a little. Mm. You just get so drunk in the Holy Ghost. And you're so lost in him. You're like, whatever you want, Lord. And he's like, all right. I want you to go to the bus stop tomorrow. And I want you to witness to everybody. You're like, okay. Absolutely, God. And then you're out of the spirit. You're like, did, he, did I say yes to that? Did I... Did he really tell me to give that money away? Did he actually tell me to stop doing that thing? Did, mm, sometimes he gets to, he's like, uh, this is going to hurt a little bit. I'm going to have to put some numbing cream on you called the Holy Ghost. I'm going to have to numb your that inner voice that, 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 that argues with God. Hallelujah. Mm. <clears throat> ah. It also talks about a spiritual fellowship that we have. Ah. <clears throat> ah. Ah. That we have with that we engage one another ah, in song and exhortation. And so we're gonna find ways to incorporate that more in our Friday night meetings. Ha, ha, ha. Mm. So the next one comes out of mm, Romans chapter 8. Ha! In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And He who searches the hearts, knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Ha! Ah. Now, mm, there's much debate among theologians at what this groanings too deep for words means. Uh, they're, they're in, in, in how exactly Holy Spirit intercedes for the saints. There's, wow, there's debate on what that means. <clears throat> but we can universally believe ha, that Holy Spirit comes and he's active in our intercession. Ah. And with this promise, we can expect to pray beyond our understanding or our natural means. Mm. We can expect that what we're doing right now, Holy Spirit is doing more than we can see, more than we understand, more than we can produce ah, on our own. You have no idea what you're accomplishing right now by yielding the Holy Spirit. You just have no idea what's happening right now. You don't know. Every time you obey God, every time you yield to God, he's doing something. It's, 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 you're, you're sowing righteousness. You're sowing faith, and God is doing something. You can expect that as you yield to him, he is doing something in your family. He's doing something in your life. He's doing something in your future right now. I'm, I'm going to talk about that this Sunday, but I want you to be very confident that as you yield the Holy Spirit, you're not just being weird. Ah, you're actually allowing him to dig deeper into your life and into your future and into your purpose. Hallelujah. 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 The next verse is uh, Acts 4, 23 through 31, and I'm not going to read it. Mm, I just preached on it a bunch. Ah, ha, 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 ha. But mm, we have a special, uh, the leaders of the, the burning room, we have a, we have a special connection uh, to this passage of scripture. In this scripture, mm, ha, after uh, being released by the Sanhedrin, the disciples prayed for boldness and the earth shook. <clears throat> ha. <clears throat> ha. Ha. I don't know when it was. Maybe it was a year ago. Maybe, maybe a little less. <clears throat> We were up in uh, North Palm ah, at a Randy Clark meeting. And Randy Clark, he says, I have a message, but I have another message before the message. And he read this scripture. And he said, I've never heard anybody preach on this. And I've only preached on it once before. I've only mentioned it once before. He said, nobody ever talks about when the spirit come and the earth shakes. And I'm like, I talk about that all the time. And he said, there's going to be a prayer movement coming out of this room. Amen. We were in that room. 
There's going to be a prayer movement that comes out of this room that's going to shake the earth. It's going to shake this region. A couple of us looked at each other. I was like, that's us he's talking about right there. He's prophesying over us right there. He was prophesying. That's he's prophesying over this room that you're in right now. This is what he's talking about. This gathering right here. And so, <clears throat> ha, ha, ha. So we believe out of this will come a movement that will shake the earth. Out of this will come a movement that will shake the earth. Shakaraba. Mm. I really need, if you're feeling God, I need you to lean into it right now. I just, I really need you to lean into it. I need you to lean into it. Just lean into it. God, I got, if you got a glimpse of something, let him give you the whole vision. If you feel a little warmth in your belly, ask him your whole body, Lord. If you see an angel, ask for lots of angels. I, I mean, like, lean into it right now. If he's giving you a little joy, ask for a lot of joy. Don't fight it. Lean into it. We need Holy Spirit any way he wants to move in this room. Amen? We need Holy Spirit any way he wants to move in this room. Ha. Ha. Shake up. Mmm. Shakaba. 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 Leraba. Laraba. Mmm. There you go. Some people are just getting the junk shook right out of you. It's getting shook right out of you right now. Shakaba. If you're like nervous, you're like, I don't know. You just come to the front and lay down. Just do if you're like, I don't know if he's talking, just come to the front. Do something. Just, just, just get in the river. Get in the river. Yield. Lean into it. Lay on the ground. Come to the front. Do something. Lean into it. Don't let him pass you by. Don't let him pass you by. Don't let him pass you by. Sheba kata raba kata. Ha. 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 I feel like in short order, there's going to be some supernatural giving that God pr prompts. I don't know what that's going to look like or what that means, <clears throat> but we see it in Acts chapter 4. I don't talk about this a lot. I'm not trying to get money from anybody. I'm not giving you an anointed pocket for you to put it in. Uh, but, but we see they pray for boldness. They do stuff, and we see supernatural giving. And I believe God, uh, as you're going to see this Sunday, he brings a supernatural return. Ha, ah, when people respond in faith to his promptings. Shekaba. Corey, this is pretty good in here. This is good, man. Ha! I'm going to finish on time right here. Shekaba. All right. Mm, the next scripture he gave us. Ha. Is that a Luke chapter? Luke 3, 21 and 22. Hey! Now when all the people were baptized, Jesus was also baptized. And while he was praying, heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came out of heaven. You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Ah! Out of this presence, out of this anointed act of baptism, the Father spoke identity. And we can expect God to speak identity over people in this room and in this meeting. You can hear God giving you the spirit of adoption in this room. That you are a son or daughter of God. That you are the beloved. You are the bride. He could marry anybody he wants and he chose you. You, the bride. He's not hard up for a mate. Right? Ha. Mm, he's not getting the leftovers. And he chose you. And we can expect God to come and speak identity and change hearts in this meeting. And the last one is First Corinthians. Whoa. Ha. Mm. Let me just lean into that for a second. Mm. Mm. That you are accepted. You are loved. You are important. <clears throat> you are not forgotten. Ha. And you are not an orphan. The scripture came at the beginning of this meeting. God said, I will not leave you. Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. Ha. Ha. You are not alone. Mm, you are not alone. You are not alone. He is here with you. And he's doing stuff in your life. Ha. 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 Hmm. And our last one is 1 Corinthians 14, 4. One who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, 
but one who prophesies edifies the church. We can expect tongues and prophecy to come out of this room. We expect to get the edified. Ha. We're going to have times of praying in tongues, singing in tongues. Ha. People getting edified. And we can expect times of prophecy. I even felt today that people were going to get activated in prophecy earlier. I didn't know, I didn't know how, to, how to minister it, so I just kind of prayed it silently over some people. But I believe some of you in the spirit of refreshing got a spirit of prophecy upon your life. And you're going to see things through the eyes of God in your life. Ha. Even now, mm, when you're caught up in, whoa, I don't know how it is back there, but up here it's pretty good. <clears throat> ha, ha, ha. When a spirit of prophecy comes over you, you can't be discouraged about something. When you get in the presence of God and you look at something, all of a sudden you're like, wow, God is in this. That is a spirit of prophecy right there. That is a spirit of prophecy that comes upon you. That's why we need to be in the Spirit. So we can hear from the Spirit of how Jesus looks at what's happening in our life. What, what, what's happening in Boca Raton. What's happening in South Florida. What's happening in America. What's happening on the earth. Ha. 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 Did you hear people are they're trying to mm, figure out how to live on Mars? Have you seen this? Because they say we're gonna, the earth is going to mm, be in such a bad place. We're going to have to move... Is it's gonna be worse than Mars? Mm. Is the Earth gonna get worse than Mars? Is that even? Is that, you got to be kind of. I mean, like we're talking about going up three degrees or something, and we got to leave the planet somewhere that's uninhabitable. I, you know, why can't we just do that here? Right? I don't. Why don't we just do what we we're gonna do on Mars here? I don't. I don't understand why we would do that. That doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> Someone needs a spirit of prophecy on them to say, "I see a flaw right there." Why don't we move everybody to a planet to do something we could do right here? Why? Why I don't understand. Bubbles? We could do bubbles here. Why would we fly them to Mars? I don't understand. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right? That doesn't make any sense to me. Right? Someone needs to look at something through a spirit of prophecy. <laughs> We need a prophet up in these things saying, that's a fabulous idea you got there. One question, though. So we're going to build bubbles to live in because the earth is uninhabitable, and we're going to fly them to Mars. <laughs> and then we're going to fly the people to live in. Why don't we just live in the bubble here? I don't understand what's happening. We just need, a, we just need some prophets to stand up and prophesy some truth. And I just believe that you, as you're in the presence of God, you see things from a different angle. Amen? You see them through an angle of the Spirit. Am I just talking to myself? I just feel like this is a good word. I feel like this is a better word than I'm getting reaction to it. I just feel like when you're in the Spirit, you start seeing truth. Let me tell you why. Because in the Spirit, fear doesn't have its voice anymore. Fear loses voice in the Spirit. And so you start, the bold you starts thinking. The real you starts communing with God. And, and then and, and, and the, and, and, and the Spirit of Christ says to you, wow, you know what, it might be a decent idea to just to talk to that person and not run from it anymore. And the bold you says, yeah, why would I even run from them? I'm a child of God. I should just have that conversation. And then you get out of the Spirit and you're like, whoa, I had that seemed perfectly logical in the Spirit because the spirit of fear was gone at that moment. Amen? Amen. Right? And you, you think something's going to be so awful and terrible, and you go to Jesus in the Spirit, you're like, Jesus, this awful, terrible thing is coming. And Jesus is like, man, I just love you. That's so awesome. You're like, oh, I love you too, man. And I'm like, what were we talking about? And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. It's just about me and you. You're like, yeah, I don't even care about that thing. And you get out of the Spirit, you're like, oh, my gosh, it's so awful. But, but in the Spirit, it was just me and you. And that's, oh, wait a minute, I got Jesus. That's probably going to be all. That's probably going to be enough. It's probably going to work out. I just stay in the spirit and it's probably just going to work out. I don't have to let fear have a voice in my decisions, right? <clears throat> and we can expect that in this, mm, in this atmosphere. We can expect shakaba, lidaba. Mm. I want to challenge you ah, right now. Ha! Huh? Drag mm, in, 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 in the basement of your mind where you hide all the fearful things and you hear them banging on, the, on your floor at night making you scared. I want you to just pull one out right now and look at it. You'll just see it's not nearly as scary as you thought. Mm, in this presence. I want you to look at Jesus and look at it. Look at Jesus. Look at it. I bet by the third time you can't even see it. You can't even see it the third time. Because mm. in the spirit, these things like. Whoa. Shut up, Aka. 
Larabaka. Sharabaka. Larabaka. Mm. Ah. And you just might want to ask God for some solutions to these things then. Okay, God, if we're not going to go with fear as a solution, do you have a better solution possibly? Mmm. Laraba. I bet it doesn't involve fear. Mm. <clears throat> if you're ever like really caught up in the spirit and you don't want to be around Jesus anymore, just start getting fearful. <clears throat> Meditate on some lies. <clears throat> ha. But let's just meditate on promises right now. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so that's the end of my teaching right there. Hope you got something out of it. But that's what we're going to be doing. Yeah, you don't have to do that. But ah, shabaka. Mm.